Drug development is an expensive endeavor, costing over $2.6 billion to bring a single drug to the market. The process takes over a decade and is littered with failures, particularly failures of clinical studies. The main reason our clinical studies fail is the fact that laboratory experiments ultimately lead to animal experiments and animals are very, very different from humans. Rodents, such as rats and mice, are routinely used in drug development, have a different genetics, have different physiology, and have a different metabolism than human beings. So many times, drugs that are very effective in small animal models are simply not effective in the clinic. Human-on-chip technology came to change all that more than 30 years ago. The idea is that we can take human cells and make human tissues out of them and put them in a microfluidic device that can mimic human physiology. The problem is that there hasn't really been a clear demonstration of drug development using this new technology. One of the things that is making our technology unique is the idea that we can go beyond animal experiments, that we create not only three-dimensional human tissue, but we also physically integrate microsensors into those tissues. These sensors offer us information in real time, so we can measure them every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day of the experiment. And this technology that we integrated in tissue dynamics allows us to understand how drugs work and when they stop working. And this is something very, very unique in the human-on-chip field. Over the past two years, we developed a three-dimensional model of the human kidney. There are many instances where prescription medication or chemotherapeutic agent actually causes damage to the kidney. One of the most important ones is cisplatin. Cisplatin is a routinely used chemotherapeutic agent that is used in a variety of cancers. But we usually limit its use to five or seven days treatment because of the kidney damage. What we found is that cisplatin prevents the kidney cells from releasing the glucose they reabsorb. Essentially, it causes this massive accumulation of sugar in the kidneys, and we can see that on the chip. And our technology allows us to see that this glucose causes the cells to start synthesizing fat, accumulating fat, that is simply not supposed to be there in the human kidney. And that fat causes the damage that we see. The drug we found is called empaglifosome. And like other drugs in this category, blocks the reabsorption of sugar in the kidneys. And once we found that it can prevent the toxicity of cisplatin, we try to find cancer patients that have also been taking this drug. The reason these patients would take this drug is diabetes, hyperglycemia, high levels of glucose in the blood. These patients should actually show higher levels of kidney damage because not only the chemotherapeutic agent can damage the kidneys, but also diabetes itself. And what we found is exactly the opposite. Patients taking both medications had less signs of kidney damage. They were protected from the nephrotoxic effect of the chemotherapeutic agent. This is the first demonstration that we can use human on a chip to circumvent animal experiments. That we can, in certain instances, leave them behind to move and surge forward in clinical development of new therapeutics. The potential here is enormous. You can imagine now that patients taking the same chem chemotherapeutic agent can take it not only for five or seven days, but for longer periods of time because the side effects have been inhibited. Maybe even take higher doses of the same medication 
and get a better chance of eradicating cancer. We think this is a critical first step enabled by the technology of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and tissue dynamics to go to a future where we rapidly develop pharmaceuticals using innovative human-on-chip technology.